Okay. Yeah, so unscripted, back again today. Uh, we have a very special guest. Wow. Very special. Uh, very, very special. Yeah. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Shade. Yeah. I am the host of the London to Lagos podcast. Yes. And wow. um, what else do you want to know about me? Uh, how do you spell your name, by the way? S. Well, follow Shade. F O L A S A D E. There's my no first H question. in mine. Yeah, my first question was it? Is it Shade? Or shardy. Yes, because yeah, yeah. I put the apostrophe on the E. <laughs> is that how you... I don't... It's the same thing. It's the same. It's just how, it's just how people pronounce it over yeah. here. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Shardy, shardy, whatever floats your boat. Cool, cool. Yeah. I'll call you what your parents call you. And that is... For that shardy. So you guys can talk now. You know, what tribe are you from? What tribe are you from? I'm guessing you're... We're from the same bar, tribe. Yeah, from the same Do you know what's so <laughs> weird? Because <laughs> I don't know... I'd obviously, I didn't know, but for some reason, I had intuition that you were from the same tribe. You can tell more time about the name. Yeah, from the okay, name. Okay, so there's not going to be any disagreements here. I don't disagree. <laughs> I don't really mind. You don't I don't mind. You yeah, you don't maybe know. it's true. It's true. That in terms of like the culture, Nigerian culture. No, no there's not, not going to really. be. There's not going to be. Not mm-hmm. really. But I don't know. Like That's people good. just like to always come for Yoruba people. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know where. That's where it is, honestly. And they but be hating. That's, that's actually, no, honestly, that's where it stems from. But they don't like to say that. But it's all right. I don't even come out saying that you are the best or anything like that. But they just see how, how lit we are today. So it's just like, yeah. That's funny. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah, so tell us a bit about like um, London to Lagos. Um, so last year, I moved to Lagos um, for work purposes um i was working on a project in nigeria um i've always wanted to not always wanted to move to nigeria but i it was a couple of years ago that i had um, traveled to nigeria and i told myself you know one day i'm gonna move here like Mm. permanently like this is the lifestyle for me um and then last year everything just kind of like fell into place and i decided to make the move and that's what i did seriously that is so crazy yeah yeah i had to do some things like so the company that i work for have an office out there so there was some paperwork and some background things to sort out Mm. but pretty much yeah that was it are you a spontaneous person like growing up were you like the person that just no i'm not a spontaneous person at all i'm a very calculated person yeah um i like to plan i'm a project manager i love to plan everything and so i had told myself before the age of 30 i'm gonna move to nigeria yeah um so I plan everything. I like to be spontaneous once in a while. Yeah. But generally speaking, I'm a very calculated person. I like to plan everything. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That is still just so It is great. a bit, that yeah. Is, so that cool. is yeah. so... That's mad. Yeah. 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 Everyone always asks me, like, why would you move? Like, why did you move? And a lot of people who live in Nigeria are like, why would you come here? Like, of all <laughs> the places in the world that you could actually go to, why Nigeria? Mm. Why Lagos? But there was just something about Nigeria and me that we just connected there's just some sort of like i didn't i wasn't born there yeah, i didn't grow up there yeah. um but mm. there was just something i can't explain it on the inside of me that, that just connected just a, yeah attracting yeah there. yeah that is that is well that's amazing yeah man. that's it that really? takes some serious yeah yeah to to do that to up and because boy i'm just thinking about myself i don't know if i could just go and live in another country just Obviously, I'm guessing you have family there and, like... Well, I have family like, there, but, like, in terms of my immediate family, none of my yeah. family um, live there. My parents live in the UK, my siblings mm. live in the UK, mm. my closest friends live in the UK. I, I yeah. didn't really have anyone out there, to be honest. Really? Um, and it, it was part of the challenges that I had there, not really having. I yeah. I like being on my own. I'm a very um, confident person. Mm. But um, I, after a while, I started to struggle not having friends and family around like that okay um but now that i've done that move and i've moved to nigeria now i will i will go anywhere like Serious? i will go, yeah i will go anywhere i'll still continue to do work in nigeria so i'm still working on projects in nigeria now wow. but if there's an opportunity in australia i'm going if there's an opportunity in dubai i'm going <laughs> yeah, <laughs> drop, drop, drop. No, yeah, <laughs> you're you're going. would you go to Suriname? have you heard of that country i actually haven't heard of that country but i would go south america why not 
if there was something to do, if there was a project there and I was passionate about it or interested in it, why not? What's stopping me? Wow. Why wouldn't you? Like, life is too short. Sometimes you just sure. got to jump that's powerful, and yeah. do something. Do it. Just jump. I'm not knowing where you're jumping. I just, I'm yeah. That's scary. Because it's not easy. <laughs> I, just thinking about it, even to, let's say, uh, countries like America, I don't just throw names mm. in there, America, Spain, Italy, whatever, mm. to move it over there, like mm. it's different from you thinking and then like actually considering yeah. to do it mm. yeah. so yeah that's i really it's admirable that's yeah, actually like, let me wow. even ask you like obviously now you're looking at like hindsight and it's kind of i'm guessing it, we'll, we'll talk about that but it, it feels like it's worked out for you you enjoy it like at the time of when you were actually thinking of moving like was there any doubts like how were you actually feeling there are a million and one doubts yeah a million and one doubts um First of all, my, I don't know my family, but it, really, it was really my mom. She really didn't want me to, like, really? you know, she was like, please, don't go. <laughs> <laughs> she really didn't want me to, to leave. And that kind of, like, held me back at times. And even when I was trying to make the move with my office, yeah. um, there were a few things that didn't go to plan. So I was supposed to actually leave in, I think, July. And it just didn't seem like it was going to happen, right. meaning I would have to find another route to get myself to Nigeria. Mm. So I definitely had doubts. I'm a Christian. Yeah. Um, so at the time I was thinking, oh, maybe God doesn't want me to go to Nigeria. Maybe that's mm. what it is. Mm. Um, so I definitely had doubts. Definitely, definitely, definitely had doubts at the time. Yeah. You were looking I did. Wow. I did. Wow. Boy. We're gonna so we're gonna continue talking about this meeting I do because this is crazy. But before that, obviously, this is the year twenty twenty, so no conversation can can continue without talking about Corona and how Corona has affected Whew. you or how worse 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 coronavirus. Coronavirus. Wow. What do I say? Um, there's too much. To it, say. There's, there's too much. There's, a, there's too much to say. There is mm. too much to say and. It's affected everyone in a way that yeah. you just couldn't have imagined it. Um, for me personally, um, I know like friends and family who have caught the virus, mm -hmm. um, but it's it's you know it's just the fact that throughout this time, I've because of coronavirus and the effects of coronavirus and the lockdown, I've lost friendships, I've lost rela wow. various relationships, I've lost. Um, my grandma died this year. I had wow, two uncles sure. die this year. So there's just been a lot going on. Mm. There's been a lot. It's just been it's been a very, very, very tough year. Mm. Um, but, you know, you don't grow where there is no adversity. You don't grow where there are no struggles, where there are no challenges. So, mm. you know, I told myself um, a couple of weeks ago that I'm going to start saying that this is the best year of my life ever. Um, mm. And just put, just have a different perspective and say, you know, it's the best year because I've I've grown so much throughout this year. Yes, I've lost and lost, and I've taken so many L's this year. Yeah. But I know that I'm a stronger person. I'm more resilient. Mm. Um, and going into 2021, I'm going to be a stronger, a better person. I'm more self-aware. Yeah. My emotional maturity has is is through the roof. Like I just, I'm just going to focus on the positives. It's been terrible mm. for everyone, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm just, I choose to focus on the positives. That's good. That's, that's you're dropping so many bombs. <laughs> oh, what was that in. one? Um, you can't grow where there's no adversity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that one's not yeah. yeah. Like t t that mindset shift is so big, though, isn't it? Because yeah, yeah, it's just massive. But you, you, I feel like you have to go through things to even get to that place where you start to. Yeah. Because I don't think I've always felt or thought that way. It's going mm. through the year. The way I've gone through the year has helped me to feel like you know what. I've grown this year. Like, I'm going to reflect and look back and how have I grown and yeah. focus on those bits as opposed to, oh, I've taken this L here, I've taken this L, yeah. Mm. Focus on the positives. It's not easy, but... So, when when did we go into lockdown? Now, March, right? March. Where were you? Like, where was your, give me your timeline of your <laughs> whereabouts where you were. Like, so, corona, corona came through, like, what? Beginning of the year? Yeah, kind of, yeah. Were you still in Nigeria at that time? So... Um, beginning of the year, as in January or March. Actually, when did when Corona, we start hearing about it? Corona it was actually said, no from December. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I was in Nigeria. I was still yeah. I was in Nigeria at the time, and then I came back to London in February. Um, okay. so I was in London from February for a couple. In February, yeah, London for a couple of weeks, and then I went back to Nigeria. So just before lockdown in the UK, went I went back to Nigeria. Yeah. Back in Nigeria. And then I thought, I think a week or two after that, Nigeria went into lockdown as well. Right. Yeah. So. Now, please talk to me about how lockdown was in Nigeria. What lockdown? 
Oh my god! <laughs> because I remember I'll be like calling home, like calling my grand and like everyone there, and I'll be like asking for like an update, like how's mm. it going, how's everybody doing, and then like oh yeah, they're, they're trying to tell, they're telling us to stay at home, and I'm like okay, so what, is everyone staying at home and that. Like, like restaurants were closed um pretty much but there were a few they're called bookers i don't know if you know what that is it's like a local kind of like, kind of like on the street local spot yeah, 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 yeah they would still be open and uh, people would still be like hanging around and you know buying food yeah. and stuff mm. like that um but like restaurants were closed um but people were out and about people were definitely out and about yeah, it w- there weren't really a lockdown. People were going to people's houses. We were having party. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. There That's weren't crazy. really a lockdown. And people weren't really wearing masks in the beginning either. And there was yeah. a lot of people saying, "Oh, it doesn't exist. It's not real. Corona's not real." In Congo, where I'm from, in Congo. Um, did you have guessed that? You really told me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You really That's told useless. me, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't have guessed it. But you, okay. you, you told me. Yeah. yeah, they were making songs about it, about oh. coronavirus. <laughs> wow, especially with that signature guitar in Congo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. That yeah. is actually funny. Yeah. So they didn't take it seriously either, I guess. Nope. Not at all. Not at all. I even came across. Um, I don't know if it's real. It looks real, but I don't know if you guys saw there was. A video kind of going viral of um, <clears throat> uh, a, a dad in Nigeria telling his son not to follow him back oh, home. Oh yeah, I saw yeah. that. I mean, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> because he told them not to go through a certain yeah. province and, or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was going out yeah, and, yeah. and doing that. Yeah. And then, and then <laughs> one guy was filming him and saying like, "Follow your dad." And he says, "Don't follow I mean, me. Don't, don't follow me, me home. Yeah, yeah. I told you not to go <laughs> through there." I didn't see that. Anymore. He just no, drove off. That, 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 that was very funny. That was very funny. But wow. Did you experience any of the like, lockdown over here? Like, I mean, the first lockdown? Or were you there? No, I didn't. No, I didn't actually. I didn't experience okay. it at all. How was it? It was, it was weird. It was actually weird. Because I feel like People it was very stupid. different to this, well, the second lockdown. Are we in lockdown now? I don't even know. They're doing the we're not thing. anymore. Yeah, we're they're doing we're the not thing, in yeah. lockdown doing, yeah. We're not in lo- official lockdown, yeah. but we're... I don't know, anyway. But yeah, it was very difficult. I feel like the first one, well, I, was, I could speak for like around me, like around my side. Everyone was kind of just kind of obeying it. And like, because mm-hmm. I feel like, to be honest, nothing was open anyway. Mm-hmm. So you weren't really going anywhere apart from like the supermarkets. Mm-hmm. That's literally the only thing that was yeah. open. So I feel like a lot of people were still were like weary of what was yeah, going on. Irrational like. behaviour. <laughs> but I feel like everyone was like adhering to like all the rules and mm. everything like that. So it was it was a weird time, man. Yeah. It was a weird Definitely time. Definitely weird time. I was seeing reports of people hugging up toilet roll. Okay, and so. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It yeah, 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 yeah. was all of that. It was crazy. The phases of Corona. There was there was there was there was there's been a lot of phases. Yeah. Yeah. Hand gel gone. <laughs> <Finished>. <laughs> Prices being spiked up. Like, yeah. yeah. That was crazy. Yeah. Not able to cough in public. No, you still can't cough in public. You still can't cough. <laughs> like, if I see someone mm-hmm. cough in public now, cough. I'm going to look at them sideways. Like, mm. I was saying the last time I had really? one day. I had it's that. definitely not the same as the start, though. No, it's still the same, man. Really? Some people just don't care, but <laughs> listen, when you have a cough, you don't want anyone on the train. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you won't cough it at all. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I was saying last time, yeah, there was like one day, and um, I remember. No, wait, I was even in a store. So this was pretty much just after lockdown ended, so like around May or something like that. Mm. And I was in one store. And I remember I felt my throat. You know when you just feel something just scratching the back of your throat? I don't know, like maybe just eating too much peanuts or something. And it's just dry. And you just need like, bam, you feel like you're just going to choke. Your eyes are popping out, like. And I was just, I had to just try and just force it, like my way out of that store. But it was just, I was on the rope. I was on the rope, man. It was very, very funny. My day. You thank God you're here. <laughs> well, I guess we have to talk about uh, this unsafe vaccine. Let's go. Cause we always have a conspiracy section, so. <laughs> yes. wow. Are you taking this vaccine? If I have a choice, no, I'm not taking the no. vaccine. Um, but okay. if it stops me from traveling, yeah, and um, then I will take the vaccine. But I will try to delay it. So after like a few other people have taken the vaccine and mm. maybe then I'll then take the vaccine yeah. but if I have a choice no yeah. I'm not taking the vaccine do you think vaccine. it's safe as it is you I, you just don't, just know. don't know you can't yeah. really know you know some of these things because even me saying oh, I'll wait a couple of you know weeks or months 
you don't really know the side you don't you can't really analyze the side effects until like mm. 30 years later and when, you know people thing. are having children wow. and you can't yeah. you can't you won't really know yeah so it's it's, it's difficult you know mm. it's difficult but wow. i i know that i if they say you can't go to this country or you can't travel without yeah. getting vaccine i'm sorry i'm gonna have to get that vaccine okay, okay. i've been that speaking vaccine. to a lot of people even with um <laughs> yeah thing in the last episode yeah. that if it comes to the holiday you have to just start considering it as well. Uh, a lot of people, it's holidays, it's like the threshold for a lot of people. I need to travel. I like to travel. Mm. And I have work projects in other countries. I have to travel. I don't yeah, have a choice. Mm-hmm. You know? What about you guys? Are <laughs> you taking that breath? Well. <laughs> <laughs> me, I'm not taking... Actually, before you ask me, yeah? <laughs> before you ask me, what are your reasons for not taking it? Is it more to do with, like, we don't know the side effects and stuff like that? Or do you believe the conspiracy is, like, the vaccine might be the mark of the beast? They might, believe... they might be putting a microchip in there. They might be tracing you, track and trace. Like... I don't... Th- I haven't read or seen any evidence that it is the mark of the beast or there's going to be some sort of track and trace or some sort of chip in there. Yeah. For me, it's just the side effects. I don't know what the side effects are. Like, I'm not someone who likes taking medication anyway in general. I don't like all that yeah. stuff. Mm. Unless I ha- absolutely have to. Yeah. So yeah, for me, it's just the side effects. Yeah, so I, I'm similar as well. Like, I don't believe in like a lot of these conspiracies because, quite frankly, they're just very. Wow, it's I don't even know. Some they're a bit laughable. Some of them are very laughable when you actually think about how practical those things are. But it just I don't know, man. It just reflects the state of. I don't know. Just reflects the state of what did I say, of education maybe <laughs> <laughs> i don't know of the nation man. but anyway yeah for me personally i'm weary because like this is a vaccine that they've pretty much manufactured within like five six months mm. so i'm like fam like a lot of the vaccines that that are now available have been they've been researching them and yeah. developing them for years yeah. and they still constantly do yeah. that now yeah. like it's not that the vaccine is there yeah. that is it now forever yeah. they're still like doing stuff to it mm-hmm. because there's had there has been some adverse side mm-hmm. effects for mm-hmm. some of those drugs as well mm. so now if you're now telling me to do this and then you produce this thing in five months mm. i'm a bit like hmm yeah because like you said as well like even if it doesn't affect me personally how do I know it's not going to affect yeah. my kids or maybe my grandkids, yeah. great grandkids? Yeah. We don't know what it's going to do to them. So it's a very much sticky one still. I actually forgot that, you know, it goes that far down the line yeah. when it comes to, you know, vaccines and, mm. and the like. But yeah, pretty much the same reason. I, I don't think it's, it's safe, mainly for that reason. Um, they're targeting the only people first. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I say targeting because generally I don't know if they know what they're signing up for. Mm. I don't know. I, you know, I don't know if, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to come up with conspiracies like they're getting paid, but I'm just saying, I don't know. Mm. And I don't think the government just randomly said, Hey, you know, for no reason at all, let's just start with the elderly. I'm sure there's a reason why. I just don't know what it is. Well, they wanna... I don't know. I just what? say, that's what I'll say. I just say, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, let Boris take it first and then we'll see if it's alright. Oh, he said he'll take but, it. Um, <laughs> you do it live. Same live with camera. Barack Obama and I think someone else as well said they're going to do it. Let on do TV? It. Yeah, let them do it first and let us make sure but that it's safe. I think, I but even like still. Skeptical. How do I know that's it? what you're actually taking? Exactly. They might just be just water. This is the situation. But hey, listen, curveball, yeah? Curveball. Now, a lot of people are skeptical about this vaccine yeah and i feel like a lot of that stems from the fact that coronavirus with the symptoms don't seem as deadly as Mm. something like ebola or Mm. like another like viral um disease or something Mm. like that if now the symptoms look similar to like i don't know like an ebola or or Mm. aids or something like that what would people be actually saying people would be running people be running to it so that vaccine running i'm just thinking like hmm Hmm. <laughs> it's an interesting one. It is what interesting. It is interesting, and I, and I think you're one hundred percent right. Like the reason why people aren't taking it that seriously is because it's like once you you know in the beginning they were saying oh, it was you know the symptoms are similar to a, to a yeah. common cold, yeah. and it's kind of like hmm? like a common cold that I can sleep off and exactly. same bed, like honey and lemon. Yeah, yeah. honey and lemon. Honey and lemon. Really? 
Um, yeah, you're 100% right about that. If it was something like, oh, the symptoms are similar to Ebola, people would be running. I would mm. be running <laughs> to, to get the um, vaccine. Yeah, exactly. When was the last South time Africa? you went to Nigeria? A very long time ago. When, when did you go? Like 2000 and... Wow, maybe like 2009. You need to go back. I Nigeria do. Has very, I actually it's, do. It's changed and you enjoy yourself. You had a good time. I'm sure. I'm sure. I know. I've got a lot of friends that... I haven't had a lot of friends, like international like, students that came over here. But I know, like, it is, it's, it's good. I know I'm enjoying myself. I wanted to go this year. One of my boys actually went this year pretty much just before thing. And this was his first mm. time going there. Like, he didn't really... He wasn't really in touch with, mm. with his culture mm. or background at all. And he said that it was just fantastic to be around, like, his people kind of thing. So Would you say you're in touch with... Sorry to cut you off. Would you say you're in touch with your culture? I'm 100% in touch oh, with my fantastic. culture. that's fantastic. 100%. That's good. 100%. <laughs> That's another thing that I wanted to say as well. How do how do okay foreigners? Not, what's the word? Diaspora, yeah. diaspora, yeah. as people say. <laughs> yeah. How can they kind of connect with their culture? Because like I look at it now, and for us, I'm guessing you're probably like probably like first gen or maybe second gen in this country. A lot of us Africans are. Mm-hmm. But then when I look at like the Caribbeans, mm. they're like four, yeah. five, some of them. And I look at them, and not that I'm comparing everything, and a lot of my friends are not really in touch with like the Caribbean roots. Mm. Yeah, they might eat the food, mm. but like in terms of mm. like knowing actually like the struggles of the country or like knowing history of the country or even knowing like just, I don't know, maybe the music, mm. the arts, like all those cultural influences and all that kind of stuff, a lot of them are kind of out of touch with it. So, I've always had this, like, in mind, like, like, in terms of, like, if I was to have kids, I know 100% they're going to know the culture. Mm-hmm. They, they, they have to, mm-hmm. kind of thing. I'll do my own little bit mm-hmm. to make sure that they know mm-hmm. enough about the thing. But, like, how can you ensure that, even though we're living in another country, yeah. we don't lose our roots or lose, like, our heritage, kind of thing? So, I feel like my parents <laughs> did a really fantastic job. Um, so, um... First of all, my parents, so the language that we speak is Yoruba. So my parents would speak Yoruba to yeah. us, the kids, to me, to, to my siblings. Um, and I know some parents who even took it further and would force their children to respond yeah. in Yoruba. Mm-hmm. But my parents never did that. So I can't speak Yoruba. Yeah. If I you try can understand to, it. Yeah, but I understand yeah. it exactly. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I feel like that's the first thing. And then we would go to Nigeria. My dad would take us, my dad likes to travel. So he would take okay. us to Nigeria every other year. So every year we'd go on holiday. Yeah. It would be um, America, then the States. I mean, America, then Nigeria, America, then Nigeria. And just doing that after a while, me and my older sister, we just started going to Nigeria on our own, like without my parents. Oh, serious? And then I started going without my sister. So, wow. yeah, so I feel like my parents really played a, a, a big part in ensuring that we are in tune with our culture. My Literally, yeah. my parents speak Yoruba to us till now. Yeah. I'm speaking to my mum, she's going to be speaking Yoruba. Sometimes I'm like, mum, can you speak English, please? <laughs> like, can you actually just speak to nah, me in English? Like but yeah, yeah, she yeah. speaks to me in Yoruba. She makes sure that we eat the food. She makes sure she makes sure that we learn how to cook the food. Mm. Um, so I feel like it's it's really, really the parents. Yeah. Um, and even if you didn't have the opportunity to have your, like, your parents take you to um, you know, your home mm-hmm. country, just go. Mm. Take a trip. The same way that you, you, like, you'll be excited to go to a trip to... To Spain, be excited to go back to yeah. Ghana or Nigeria or Congo or Zimbabwe or South Africa. Be excited That's really because true, you know? what you see typically in the in the media mm. isn't necessarily yeah. Yeah. what is, 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 is really like out there. Yeah. So be excited if you're willing to pay a grand or whatever much, however much it is to go to I don't know Sweden, pay yeah, a grand true. to go to to Nigeria, go experience your culture. Why not? You have That's a fantastic true. time. I promise you, you won't want to come back. Mm. <laughs> mm. that's very true you know that is very true you because like we're so quick to like be like okay let's go let's go to i don't know let's go barcelona let's go to all these places no one, no one ever wants to go back to their country no one ever wants to go mm-hmm. back and i'm sorry every time i used to go to nigeria i come back everyone at work be like oh my god your skin's glowing oh my goodness and i'm like yeah that's yeah. that vitamin d that is that's real. that sun artificial is real <laughs> I used to just, it just made me feel like I'm not supposed to be here, you know. Mm. It doesn't even go with my skin. How can yeah. I be leaving and come back? And everyone's like, oh my God, you look so good. Your <laughs> skin is glowing. Oh my, oh my goodness. So it just made me feel like, no, we're not supposed to be here like that. Like, this mm. is not 
Surrey. I love this country very much. But the UK, but this is not my home. Yeah. Nigeria mm. is for sure. I heard that hundred percent. And off, off camera, you were speaking about that as well. Mm. So, for you, home is your background in terms of where you come from. Absolutely. Now, some people would say home is where you know some people say where home is. Huh? Home is where you're born. <laughs> some, some people would say home is you know where you grow up. You know the memories, um, where you, you're accustomed to the state you put the the community mm. so not to say that they would forget yeah, where they've yeah. come from but that's their home they know it's a tough one because london is definitely home to me like i yeah. love london i've got a lot of love for london i grew up in london this is where my yeah. friends are this is where my family this is where the majority of my memories yeah. are yeah. in london london is home i won't lie but so is nigeria nigeria is definitely home and it's a different kind of home i can't explain it mm. but it's a different kind of home in nigeria like so i've experienced a lot of and this is not the reason why i'm saying this but i've experienced a lot of racism in this country mm. when i go to yeah. nigeria it's none of that it's good, it just feels different it's just something different about it there's a yeah. i'm relaxed uh. you know i feel comfortable there's something mm. about that you know they say home is where the heart is. Yeah. My heart is definitely yeah. in Nigeria. Mm. London is my home. Don't get me wrong. I love this place. I will always yeah. come back. Like I couldn't yeah. really be yeah, in Nigeria yeah. like all the time, like every single day, 365 days. Yes, no, that's not me. But my heart is in Nigeria. Therefore, Nigeria is my home. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. how I feel personally. Yeah. Hmm, I guess you're saying that there's home and there is home. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Exactly, and in a way, I've chosen Nigeria to be my home in the sense I never, I wasn't born there, I didn't grow up there, you know. So even if you've lived in the UK all your life, you your parents never took you back to your country, Nigeria, Congo, Ghana, wherever mm. you can actually still be your home if you choose to like connect yeah, to that true. place. Yeah, Dubai can be your home. You, you don't have to be from Dubai. Mm. You know, Zimbabwe can be your home. You can literally, it's where you. Mm, to a certain extent, mm-hmm. choose to connect to that you're going to say is that. your home. That's just true. my personal perspective. I do agree with that. I agree to an extent. So where's okay. your home? My home, yeah, my home. <laughs> <laughs> I've got three homes, yeah. So London is my home. London, I love this place. I, I love it. It's like, like you said, all my memories are here. My people are here. So I will always have a t- attachment to that place. I feel like home is a place that you got an attachment to. I've got an attachment mm-hmm. here. I've got attachment to Nigeria as well. Even though I need to go back, I actually need to. But you in terms of everything, back. like, it's still home for me. Mm. It's still home for me. And Japan is my home as That's well. That's interesting. Why is Japan <laughs> your home? I don't think I've heard you say that before. Have you been to Japan? <laughs> do you know, do you know, Japan, yeah? Japan is the con- is one of, like, my favourite countries in the world. In terms of their culture, in terms of, like, just the the landscape, the geography, like everything about that country is just perfect to me. Like, how can you have like a mountains and then beaches, <laughs> and then like you've got like very high tech cities, but then you've also got that the more traditional thing. It's just got everything. I love that place. That's interesting. Hmm. I might watch some anime as well. So that's, <laughs> oh man, oh, comfortable. <laughs> Wow. But yeah, it's not home like how I say I that home. Let me not say it. it's not home, but it's not home like, to be. Like home to be. Home to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. That's that's interesting. That's cool. Um, so yeah, I guess we can jump into the topic actually. Actually, quick uh, question: What's home for you? That's gonna say. Croydon. Because <laughs> <laughs> Croydon is not London. Here we go again. Here we go again. As a South Lander, do you accept or? I'm so sorry. It's like five notes to everyone else. No, no, I was just checking because she's a South London, isn't it? So everyone, everyone, everyone on this podcast says Croydon. I'm so sorry. I'm tired. (laughs) I've had enough. (laughs) Listen, Croydon is in the middle. Of what? Of what? Kent. It's very easy to get into the central areas. Frozen and it's also near but... the the outskirts. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like uh, for example, traveling, uh, to get to Gatwick Airport will take me twenty five minutes. Mm-hmm. But hold, hold on, hold That's on. That's a super fast. Hold that train on. is doing hundred. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. A thousand <laughs> hold on. kilo miles but an hour. Also. 
to get into London Bridge and Victoria, the more populated areas, is 10 to 15 minutes. And you know so what do you say about that? doing that's mad train. speeds though. That's you know train. that train. That's, uh, it's, it's that's a bullet train. I'm not too busy skipping stations. <laughs> that train, it, listen, there's no stops on that line, innit? <laughs> what do you mean there's no there's stops? No no, stops. There's no stops. <laughs> <laughs> Even if there's stops, the driver doesn't stop. With listen, the I still get on TFL, yeah? Transport for London, uh, yeah? <laughs> it's the price the same, though. <laughs> it's the price the same. Where do I live? A utopia or what? <laughs> Croydon is at South London and... Yeah. What? Like that, so sorry. Uh, you. you guys, it's not going to make sense what I'm about to say, but you guys discriminate the CRO postcodes. Yeah, just because yeah, you've just said it. You just said it. That's not London. That's definitely not London. That's definitely not London. No, 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 I wanted us to talk about representation. Okay. Representation in terms of uh, culture, um, skin, skin color. Well, actually, let me let me rephrase it. Representation in terms of we can start from our skin color background mm. in our culture, such as representation in music, uh, film, you know, the industry, mm-hmm. if you like. Um, for me, one thing that I picked on. Uh, during lockdown, I don't know if you know the YouTuber Little Black Book. No, so I don't. I'm not a YouTube person. Okay, cool. <laughs> we we had him on. He's a very yeah, very yeah, interesting yeah. guy. But one of, on one of his uh, uh, videos, he touched on how black women are represented in film, mm. uh, in in TV, as aggressive as a certain way. Um, uh, I guess we're gonna have, this is a long listen, conversation. Okay, let me just calm down. <laughs> listen, sorry, sorry, everyone. No, but we can start from there. That's that's just one f- we can start from there in terms of representation. Um is it is it wrong in most of the ways that it is, you know, portrayed? I don't know. I take it from there. I so started. So crazy to me because I had a I conversation about this this morning. Wow. wow. It's just so crazy to me. <laughs> like, I'm really struggling. <laughs> wow. Um, wow. I do think that black women, especially darker skinned black women, are portrayed mm. as aggressive mm. in the media. And I think sometimes, this is my personal opinion, I do think that black women are very strong. I would describe a black black woman as generally strong, and I feel like. Am I be or do I want to be correct? How nice do I want to be? It's Say <laughs> how you want to say it. Black women are strong women because we've had to be. Yes. And for you to turn around and describe a black woman or portray a, a, a black woman as aggressive, to me, that says more about you. There's than a it difference. Does, uh, yeah. yeah mm-hmm. About the black woman, personally. Yeah. Um. That's actually true. Wow, when you say it like that. Mm. That says more to me about you as a person mm. than about the black woman that you're trying to portray or you're talking yeah. about. I'll leave that as that. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's really something, you know. It's true, though. It's true. Imagine, yeah, now we know how black people have been treated over the past how many years. We know how black women have been treated. Now... In 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 response to this, black women have had to become more thick skinned. They've had to become more, you know, more driven. They've had to become more like believers in themselves. Mm-hmm. And now you're even now coming to comment mm, on that on that characteristic as well. That is mad. That is crazy. That's a violation. That's a violation. Mm-hmm. That's only gonna make black women more angry it's like a vicious cycle yeah, that's yeah. just a vicious cycle yeah. and then when we're the angry black woman see what i'm saying she's aggressive mm, yeah. see what i'm saying she's so angry like it's a it's just a vicious cycle mm. Mm. Yeah. no definitely and i think we could even look as as far as our own circles in terms of family and stuff like that and see what our parents uncles aunties and the like have had to put up with and go through well mm. in terms of this context aunties mothers mm. and stuff like that and when you say people look at it and aggressive and it, it shows who they are and what they think they're in it's still maybe a level of um intimidation mm-hmm. to an extent mm-hmm. um i think when you say it like that because if you're a strong person you're strong-minded but then i say that you're aggressive 
I'm almost trying to paint it in a bad light. Yeah, literally. Yeah. As yeah. it's too yeah. much. Yeah. 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 For me, it's yeah. too much that for me. That is exactly yeah. what it is. It's called a spade a spade. That's what it mm. is. That is exactly yeah. what it is. And this is coming from a black woman who has been called aggressive and was called aggressive this morning. So wow. <laughs> so, you so, <laughs> don't worry give us that. give us the address. <laughs> we'll go and find them. Yeah, but it is a thing where, in my opinion, from my perspective, that it is a it's more of an intimidation thing where you can't handle the strength of this black woman or you can't handle mm. how intelligent she is or you're having a debate with a black woman and she's winning, if I can put it that way. Yeah. You just are, oh, why are you so aggressive? But if a man was doing it, no problem. Same thing you see in the workplace. If I see, there's... Sweet Lord Jesus. Sweet if a woman, <laughs> if a woman is being like acting like a, I'm gonna just say acting like a man in the sense that she's going for a promotion and she's, you know, she's she's working late and she's she's mm. going to the pub with the boys, um, and she's 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 really firm with you know her work and her colleagues and the, her um, subordinates. A lot of the times, and I've seen this have this first hand experience. People say, "Oh, why are you acting like a man? Like why are you being so aggressive? Why are you yeah. acting like a man? Like what, what do you think you're doing?" Mm. But if a man behaves in that exact same way, no one's going to say, why are you acting like a man? He's just being. Yeah. He's just existing. He's just doing what people expect, expect him to, to do. Be. Like, it just makes no sense to me. Mm. It makes absolutely no sense to me. That's so true. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. I'm just thinking, like, I'm just, like, as you're speaking, I'm just thinking of, like, scenarios where I've seen stuff like that. And it's very true. And I can't even, ex- I, I, I don't even understand how it must feel being a black woman to actually experience this kind of stuff as well because mm. the thing is like you know how people are thinking about mm. you as well which is a mad thing yeah because even like for me like stereotypes that you have for like a black boy is black boy in london as mm. well like i know how i feel mm. like when i don't know for example like i'll walk past a car and then i just hear the car lock <laughs> <laughs> if i wanted to the car, i'll really that break the window hilarious. like That's <laughs> Like, so I know how it, it, it feels to be on that thing. But then, like, when you, as you're saying it now, like, I'm like, wow. This is something that you probably would experience every day because this is something that is so, like, evident in the workplace in, like, so many, like, social settings and circles. Like, it's, it's mad. I've had people say to me, so I was very um, keen on not coming across as the angry black woman. So at work, I would, I would um, take a step back a lot of the times. So I wouldn't really talk. Not that yeah. I'm a talkative person, I'm a quiet I'm a quiet person, but I would I would I would be intentionally like yeah. withdrawn. Mm. Only for someone to come back and say, Oh, you're so withdrawn, you're so quiet, or you never do this. Mm. It's like mm. as a black you can't win. Yeah. And then when I do when I started to like pipe up more and say, actually no, this is how I want to do this or this is how it needs to be done. Oh, you're aggressive. Oh, you're coming across as quite aggressive. aggressive. I just don't know what you people want. You want. Mm. So just be yourself. Like I'm, I'm at, I'm at that point, and I've gone through it over a couple of years. Where I'm just like, you know what? I'm just gonna be me. Mm. Yeah. If you like it, you like it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. Like I'm not, I'm not gonna apologize for yeah. who I am. If you're intimidated by me, be mm. intimidated yeah. by me. I don't care anymore. Mm. But I'm, I've I'm gotten to that. Po- yeah, but I've oh. gotten to that point. Yeah. I've gone through the motions of okay, I don't want to come across as aggressive, or I don't want to come across as angry. Okay, I'm gonna take a step back. Oh, I'm taking too much of a step back. I'm not getting promoted because I'm I'm being too like it's. I've gone through the emotions and the motions, and I'm just at that place where I'm like, okay, fine. There's no way to win. I'm just gonna yeah. be myself. I'm just gonna be my authentic self, yeah. and I feel like that's the only way you can actually win in life. Just yeah. be yourself. Hundred percent. Yeah. Even if it, it's the longer route. Even definitely. if it's the longer route. Even if it's the longer route, it's the only way to win in life, in my personal opinion. Yeah. What's so ironic as always well that like from both of my parents, even though I'd say that my, my father is a strong figure, he's more like, how can I say, um, he's sometimes more conservative. Mm. But if I would, if I could like choose which one has shown me like more strength and like not accepting what's wrong or injustice, it's been my mum. You know, that's true you know <laughs> anytime like even if you'll go through something where someone at work or i don't know it might be the telephone broad- broadcast provider mm. trying to play around she won't accept it mm. yeah. and that, that's yeah, true yeah, you that's, know that's it's, that's it's that's inspiring though yeah. to, because you can yeah. take that and apply it yeah i went on holiday with a friend of mine a male friend and um i remember um somebody tried to cheat us 
mm. let's say, I think if we're going on a, on, a, on a tour or something, it's supposed to be like 20, maybe it's supposed to be $20, and the person charged $70 or something like that, and we mm. ended up paying. But inside of me, I was fuming, mm, yeah. and I remember at the end of the tour, I was just like, now I'm getting my money back. <laughs> and my friend was like, no, don't do that, no, just yeah. leave it, just let it go. I was like, nice, nah, the principal, mm. I'm getting my money back. I got the money back, and he was just like, "Wow, like it's so, like, it's so imagine? Just, like, well, how did you do it?" How, yeah. But you see that same characteristic that helps me to like that principle says, "Nah, I'm getting yeah. my money back." It's the same thing that people hate, like when they see it in a different light, like at work or mm. if it's going against what you like. Yeah, you hate it, it or I'm yeah. the angry black woman. I'm the mm. I'm not calm or I'm aggressive. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing that men turn around and say, oh, actually, I hate that, or actually, I don't like that about her. Mm. Like, I find it so crazy. It is crazy. I don't know. It is crazy. I feel like a lot of this stems for, from the media, like, as you mentioned uh, earlier, a lot of, like, black women are portrayed as being or, uh, very aggressive mm. <laughs> on, on the media. Like, this even reminds me of, like, earlier this year, like, where, um, I don't know if you guys remember Misha B that was on X oh, Factor, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, there was a day, like, literally before... Um, no, this was literally on a live show, mm. yeah, that... Um, who was her name, the end of this girl? Talisa. Talisa. Talisa, <laughs> 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 the end of this girl. <laughs> <laughs> she must have been like, oh, yeah, I've been hearing that. Um, people are saying that you're aggressive. You that yeah, yeah, you people. you're causing problems in the fit in the dressing room and all of that in the live show in front of everyone. She didn't need to. She didn't need to do that. You didn't need to do that. You didn't need to do that. You didn't need to do that. Like what, yeah, it, it it didn't make sense to me. Mm-hmm. And that's just that like, one example. There's many. There's plenty of examples. The, I don't know if you know about the Will Smith example um, with the old Aunt Liv, where he called the old Aunt yeah, Liv. Um, yeah. Problematic or aggressive yeah. or something like that, and then she, yeah, 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 did, yeah. And, and that's just, messed up. Yeah, that's, that, messed that up messed up her whole career. career. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is that why they? That's changed? why they did the whole that's reunion kind they... of thing. That, yeah, yeah. Wait, oh, that's why they changed Aunt Viv. Yeah. I don't know if that was that. I thought there was something in there. Oh, he said in sure. the reunion. But you know, no, you know, no. they did, they did a reunion like okay, this year. Yeah, like, I saw. I, I saw mean, you guys should watch that. That they both came together and like spoke about kind of hashed it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what, what happened? What happened? But yeah, like part of the reason why they changed um, our Viv was like we were saying that obviously he was the main man anyway. But yeah, he was saying that she's hard to work with, kind of thing. Like the similar. I don't know if you use the word aggressive or mm. whatever, but mm. painted her in a, in a bad light. Stuff that is stereotypically like associated with mm. black women, kind of thing as well. And since then, like she didn't really like her career the way her career should have gone it didn't go that way like it it went left from there and and replaced her with a light-skinned woman, woman. yeah yes, yes. Like, i noticed that so i think that was so oh, she's not she's not problematic no yeah. no i don't know i don't know it's crazy because when you think about it, imagine being a kid let's say even again in the context of a black woman growing mm. up you're watching that show and then you notice that the dark skin woman has been replaced the light skinned one has come into place. It must play in your mind, definitely. Definitely. You gotta ask questions. You will. Like, why did they replace her? Like, mm. why is this one better than the other one? Like, you would you would ask those questions. You would wonder. You would. I just remember, honestly, I just remember just thinking, like, hey, the old Aunt Viv was better. This new mm-hmm. one was kind of stiff. Yeah. Know. But <laughs> they did the same thing. I, this is just the, the thing that happens all the time. They did the same thing with my wife and my kids. kids. Oh, yeah. Like... <laughs> What was the daughter's name? I don't again? even remember the daughter's name, but they did this Claire. Claire, that's that was it. it. Mm. Yeah, that was fun. Wait, that the first Claire, she was only there for like, was it season one or like? She, 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 she was there for long. long. She was there for long. There for long. They replaced her quick with yeah. some light skin girl with curly <laughs> hair. It's like, mm. <laughs> all right, Claire. Mm. Well, so. yeah, it is. Yeah, the media, the media has definitely played played part because, like, even. I remember growing up and this is me being honest and I remember like being in conversations not me personally I never had these kind of views but like people like saying that oh yeah like black girls are like trouble like it's hassle like it's gonna be long like you might as well get like a a light-skinned girl or white girl they won't be like they will you want you'll be calm kind of thing I just I remember that that was most of us are growing up yeah yeah you had hearing that stuff that like black girls are very problematic and 
is so mad because that's even from like a very young that's mm. like secondary yeah. school days mm-hmm. that's a very young yeah, age yeah, to be kind of like developing that mentality uh-huh. so it's very mad and like the only place that i could see where that stems from was from what people see in the media mm. kind of thing so it's mad I think, I think it's being change. open and honest with what you just said because I was trying to tell a friend of mine that exact same thing. He's like, yeah. No, that's not true. That doesn't happen. But it, no, you it's true. literally just no, said, it is 100% true. That's Let's what be real. It is true. It no, is definitely. true. I, even me, like, since we're <laughs> an honest, open moment, I, I said this one time before. Like, even for me to an extent, because of the conditioning of like TV and stuff, mm. there was a period of, you know, the young adulthood where I didn't favor you know black women black females to be attractive at all it was only white you know um that's going a step further uh but again like you said it's just yeah. so like when you take a step back and see it, it's just so crazy it's crazy how these different agendas and narratives are played out mm-hmm. um it's definitely conditioning like you said and since we're having this open moment it's also, <laughs> <laughs> i grew up for a long time thinking that the person I'm I date or the person I'm with, the man I'm with, has to be darker than me. Mm. And I'm not a light skinned woman. Mm-hmm. But because I would always see the light skinned woman with the darker man, yeah. I grew up thinking that was the norm mm. that that was what's supposed yeah. to happen. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I'm supposed I can't be with someone who's light the same skin colour me as me or lighter. Like yeah. the person has to be darker than mm. me. Mm. And it was just a struggle for me because I, I knew that I was a, a dark darker skinned woman. I was like it just didn't make sense. But at the time, I really thought, and that's, it's, I don't know how your parents are, but that's what my parents are. My mum is lighter, my dad yeah. is darker. Um, and my aunties and uncles, the mom, the woman is lighter, the dad is darker. I just <laughs> thought it was the normal. And then you see in the media too. like, And I really thought, when, I, when it's time for me to get with someone or date someone, that person yeah, has to that. be darker than me. Mm-hmm. Like, he has to be. So then mm. I will be, in a way, a lighter like he would see me as a light yeah. like it was crazy that's like, mad it that's was mad literally yeah that is mad but going off that that is that is crazy because we've all had that kind of like experiences yeah and this was all at a young age mm-hmm. so this is actually evidence that even though your kids like we still like kids still pick up things yeah they do they pick up things yeah like and like people say like being prejudiced racism all this kind of stuff like you're not born with it no. it's taught yeah so mm-hmm. it's from your environment from your experiences mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so i mean going forward from here i feel like a lot of like education needs to be brought towards like the younger generation 100%. and like treat like telling them to appreciate everybody Definitely. appreciate everybody you shouldn't treat somebody differently based on on, on their color something mm-hmm. so like it's so mad when you actually think about it it's so mad that like, we all breathe the same we all talk the same but because somebody's a different colour than you or different shade to you, they must be treated differently. That is so mad yeah. when you think about it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. When we're, internally, we're literally the identical. Same. I was going to say, literally. Like, literally. Mm. A lot of, um, like, you know, I hope that, because I know that my view has changed in terms of I don't have to be with someone who's darker than me. <laughs> I don't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Mm. And I hope that for you guys as well, it's, you don't oh, feel the same way. No, no, so there's, no, there has to be some unlearning and some yeah, relearning yeah, yeah. or mm-hmm. lear- new learning um, with ourselves and with the new generation and the younger generation. Like, there needs, definitely needs to be some unlearning and learning. And not even, even in our generation still, there are definitely people who still... There's do, still yeah. some people, there's some yeah. people that I hear or I see on Twitter that still carry some mad views. I'm yeah. like, how did, how did you get this far in life with, yeah. with that, with that mm-hmm. kind of view? Mm-hmm. I think for some people, I don't take it too personally because... As long as you're willing to learn, you're at least open-minded to learn or understand. Yeah. Because obviously you have the other, the other side of people who are ignorant. Mm. Yeah. So I try not to take it. You shouldn't try. I yeah. think to take it too personally yeah, yeah. at first when you see that. I don't take it personally anymore. I have a um someone who's like a brother to me, a younger brother, and I remember him saying that he only dates white girls or light-skinned girls. He's, y- <coughs> he's much younger than me. Mm. He's like maybe eighteen now or something. Yeah. And I was like, sweetheart, that's a form of self-hate. You hate yourself. Mm. You hate your skin colour. And you must Whoa. hate your mother. Because I don't understand why you would say that's heavy. that you can't, oh. you wouldn't date someone who's black. That's I'm heavy. black. Like, I'm black. Yeah. 
your mother is black you are black that is a form of self-hate and it really got to me for like months and i've been trying That's to speak heavy. to him i've tried to educate him yeah. but i've just gotten to that point where i just can't i still care but i'm yeah. just not taking it because people's experiences are different he knows why he is the way he is and why he's conditioned to feel like mm-hmm. this is best and mm-hmm. i have to trust that the same way that you the same way that i went through a, a, a learning and unlearning yeah. experience and educate he will also get to that point as well as long mm. as i i guess i can still continue to try and speak to him yeah um i can only just trust but i'm not even like you said some people are just ignorant um you just have to kind of just like not take it to heart too much mm. it's annoying though but it's real <laughs> But it's true, you know, because like for me, I used to, I used to defend some people based on like preference, and I still do you agree. You might love if, to say that. Oh, no, you're preference. allowed to have your preference. Yeah. But if you say, sorry to cut you off, but if you say, um, I only date white women or I only exactly. date light skin, that's weird. You can yeah, if you say, you oh, say, I like, I like all, with women, all, yeah, but like different. for some, for some, I'm just more attracted. But I would date anyone, but yeah. I'm more attracted. This is what I like. I can maybe just maybe a little mm. give you a little bit of a but when you say that you only date that means that like you don't date yeah, like, that means you don't weird. like that you're weird those people and that's that's yeah that's that is so fake that is so fake that is so if you're self discrimination yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's that's it just makes no sense <laughs> it doesn't make sense it actually doesn't make sense but again like you're saying I feel like it takes a lot of unlearning and <laughs> rewiring because yeah. like it's yeah. A lot of, we've kind of a lot of people have been conditioned to think this way, so it definitely takes on a lot of unwinding yeah. and learning. You're right. Definitely. Yeah. I guess you can wrap up there. Ah, I'm gonna do you can't wrap up. Huh? So I'll one thing. Yeah. Go. Okay. Cool. Now, <laughs> in listening, yeah, to your podcast, yeah, and even mentioned you touched upon it earlier, yeah, and like. Even the whole idea of moving to a, a foreign land, yeah. You said that it was God that was telling you mm-hmm. to do this. And me, I'm also from a Christian background. I believe in God. My faith in God is very strong. I really have a very close relationship with, with God at three. Now... What I want to ask you, yeah, there's a couple of questions I want to ask you, yeah, is how do you navigate between faith and your own personal desires? Mm. So, was it that you was it that God was telling you to like go to Nadj, or was it something that you like you personally felt mm-hmm. like the urge to go mm-hmm. to Nadj? If you get what I'm saying, was it like a personal desire or like was it did it align? Yeah. <laughs> um, with, the, <laughs> with the with the Nigeria, me moving to Nigeria, um, it's not like I heard a voice from heaven that said you will go to Nigeria. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't anything like that. So I feel that God speaks to us in different ways. Mm-hmm, and definitely. for me, there was just this. It's always very hard for me to describe, and I, I try not to sound all like spooky, as my friend says. Mm-hmm. It was just this pulling. There yeah. was just this thing that just kept on pulling me and I, I knew that it wasn't my person like why would I go to Nigeria please what mm. like mm-hmm. what would be the reason my whole family's here in the UK like yeah. I have a decent life here in the UK there's no real reason for me to be like oh I'm gonna just move to there wasn't there was a desire there but it wasn't like yeah I didn't have a real reason to want to go at that point so I that's how I knew it was God because there was just this pulling and this nudging and every time that i would go back to nag it would get stronger and stronger and stronger yeah. and when i was away i would there was just this longing yeah. i can't explain mm. to be in nigeria yeah. it was very weird and that's how i knew that it was it was god telling me that at some point you're going to move to nigeria yeah. and it happened it yeah. didn't happen when i thought it was going to happen but, but it, it happened, happened. Yeah. yeah well interesting that's that's very really interesting but yeah that is do you know what yeah is it's always hard to kind of have I like having these conversations with people like mm-hmm. learning like about their connection or like their relationship with God some people don't like to accredit it or attribute mm-hmm. it to actually to God being mm-hmm. a being some people say the universe mm-hmm. or the creator or mm-hmm. stuff like that for me it is God like. mm-hmm. but yeah I always find it interesting to like hear other people's like interpretations and like people's like kind of connection and relationship 
with that higher power that we know as, as, as God because like for me personally like when I'm explaining to some people that certain things that I do and like certain like paths that I've chosen and the way some things have happened in my life mm-hmm. like it can only be the doing of yeah. somebody that is actually in yeah. control yeah it's sometimes it feels it, it sounds alien to other mm. people it sounds so yeah, alien definitely. but like for me i know i know like i know myself and i know like what i would do and i know like when i can feel like another force or something that mm. is staring me mm. in another way kind of thing and like just hearing like you speak about it and like hearing like listening to your podcast as well and like listening to like how you describe like that kind of like longing mm, mm. for there is is it was very refreshing and it, it felt very like common to me mm, as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, thank you. Oh, I'm, <laughs> glad. I'm glad that um you there was a connection there because I I do try and that's what I want to hear like that's kind of feedback that I mm. want to hear back from people who who listen to to the podcast. Um, you know, you mentioned something earlier about how do you you know differentiate whether it's god or your personal desires or something like that and it's, yeah. it's not always easy to like differentiate if it's and like there's so many times where i feel like oh this is god maybe i was lying to myself but it was really my own <laughs> yeah. and then things didn't go to plan um but i feel like there's just some instances where you just know like you just you just it know just, sometimes yeah. it's hard to figure out and i would say in those scenarios where you're not sure keep praying keep like take your time yeah. Um, to figure it out um, so you really know is this God or is it my own personal designs and I feel like God is not a he's not he's not bad man he's not evil like <laughs> a lot of the times what you want and what he wants I, this is just my personal opinion what he wants will align with what you want as well it may not yeah. be the way that you want yeah, it but way. yeah, yeah. it may be a different way but what you want is usually what God wants as well but it just yeah. may not happen the way that you feel like it should yeah, happen so that you just need to have that kind of like understanding and trying to figure things out definitely thank you very much i'm gonna take that on board yeah. hey listen if everybody has listening take it on board as well oh, yeah.